All right, how are we doing guys? Wanted to share a screen with you and just riff a little bit on critical thinking. So important in psychology. Our entire course with Psych 1 is really just riddled and is about critical thinking. And when we talk about critical thinking, we're looking at how we want to attack things with our the way we think about things. We want to think deeply and actively when it comes to certain things. We want to be able to ask questions and evaluate the evidence. And really with this class, one of the main visions I have for you is that by the time you're done and you have completed successfully this course, is that you take pause and you think about things before we look at evaluating it, meaning you think deeply and actively. actively. You ask the hard questions. We don't want to just play on the surface. We want to dive deeper. We don't want to just take things for face value. We want to really inquire the evidence. And really, we're trying to get to the truth, what's going on. In psychology, the hope, and really not the hope, but what's going to happen is, is that when we look at things deeply and actively, you're going to find out, we will find out that there's many things that are counterintuitive that on the surface we might look at and say, huh, it's got to be this. But when we dive deeper and we ask questions, we use the scientific method and we're really looking for evidence, we find that, oh, wait a minute, this didn't really work that way. Such as just a basic example, many times we think that opposites attract, right? Well, why is that? Well, that's because I've heard that. That's the saying and that's mainstream. I've heard it all over the place. What does the data say though? Have we really set up experiments and pull that apart and really try to manipulate a variable and look at the output when it comes to concluding a research study on that? And what we see is just for an example is that opposites do not attract. And when we look at social psychology, we look at the fact that we're actually more drawn to people that we're more similar with. And so the notion that opposites attract doesn't really hold water. And I'm not going to really get into that theory. We'll talk about that later. But really looking at this from a critical thinking lens, we're able to really see the truth. And we really have fresh eyes, we say. And in order to do that with this class, we want to, you know, really approach things with a beginner's mindset. And part of that is just being curious, questioning, looking for the evidence. And so if we look at the second part here with B, when we we tend to hear this let me ask you this have you heard this many times someone comes up and says you know hey a glass of wine's good for you and you say huh really who said that and you say i heard it from such and such i heard it from this person or they say they say this someone says this they say that four ounces of wine a night is really good for health who says that right Whose facts are that are, are, are those? So with critical thinking, we want to think about when someone says, I heard it from, those are not facts. No one owns facts. So if someone claims that something is good or something's effective, then we don't want to say really who, because facts don't belong to people. Facts are their facts. And so it's really what. What do the facts say? And we can really get to the center of many, many problems and controversies and issues if we ask that question right there. You know, are we talking about whose facts they are or what's going on? If you if we look at who, you can just throw those out because no one owns facts. There's someone can't say something and claim factual evidence. The evidence comes from, you know, research and statistics and data that comes in based on how we set up designs. And so the second part here is I heard it from right there. We want to be able to question that in a very collegial way. Heard it from who? Is it really about who? We want to look for the what. What does the research say about this? So critical thinking is not playing on the surface. It's thinking deeply, meaning what does the research tell us and show us? The next thing here is that critical thinkers do not rely on personal beliefs, opinions, or emotions. We really try to pull those apart. And it's hard. It's hard for professionals who are in the field. We already know it. We know we take shortcuts. We call them heuristics. We have biases. And we want to set up a line of questioning in our head 
to look at things analytically and really try to get to the truth. We call that, again, critical thinking. And so a big part of all this right here is really just to learn how to think a certain way. You know, think like a psychologist would. Think like a psychologist would in terms of setting up experiments, being a researcher, being curious, questioning, looking for the data. And then the last thing is really how to apply this. Again, this whole class is designed for critical thinking. It's all about questioning and looking at theories. And that's what theories are. They're not absolute truths, but they are riddled with many, many sets of data that show us that if this variable A is presented here, variable B will do this. And so we're able to explain better, predict, and describe what's going on when we apply critical thinking skills. When you take your quizzes and tests, I often, not just me, but many professors hear this all the time. We get down to two questions, multiple choice. There's, well, there's one question, there's four opportunities or options, or maybe six or five opportunities or options for you to go in and pick. Is it A, B, C, D, E, and so forth? And many times there's two that are similar. You ever get those? And the first response that we get from students, and again, I've been a student for many years, and I am a student right now, is the professor is trying to trick me, right? And we don't, we're, we're not doing that. We're not here to trick you. We're here to put you in a position to where you can use critical thinking skills. When you take a test, a quiz, and you're asked a question, and there's five options for you on a multiple choice test, this is just a basic example, and there's two or three, usually there's about two that are really similar, that's not a trick. That's designed for you to think analytically, critically question yourself of what the truth is. And so a big part of that is to really uh, look at comparing and contrasting. You can go back and read the question first and just don't even think about the answers that are provided and think deeply and actively about the question Think about the one word that signifies this question is about what? Is it about the scientific method? Is it about clinical anxiety? Is it about social learning theory? As soon as you look at that question and you pull that apart, you get to the real, the real nuts and bolts of it, the actual concept, go back to recall and go back to our other video on learning. But if you can in your head recall the nuts and bolts and the methods and concepts of what it is that you're reading with that, with that test question or that quiz question, then you go and look at the actual answers. And what you'll find is if you get two answers that are similar, you want to compare them. Obviously, they're comparable if they're similar, but most importantly, you want to contrast. What makes those two answers different as it pertains to the main concept that's within the question? So that's how that's one example of how we apply critical thinking skills is read the question without even looking at the answers first and then in your head think deeply and actively what you've studied already or other individuals don't even read the question they actually read the answers first and then they in their head they try to recall what they've learned up to that point and then they circle back up to the question so there's a variety of ways that you can attack that based on your own approach to learning but the mat the fact of the matter is we want to think analytically and critically when it comes to for example, taking tests or answering quiz questions. There's no tricks. We're not trying to trick you. We don't have time for that. We want you to learn and we don't want you to memorize. OK, so critical thinking is not just about memorization. And that's why I don't provide quizzes or tests on the later part of the unit that just ask for definitions because anybody can memorize. Uh, true learning takes place when you're able to apply what you've memorized. So memorization is part of the learning process, but it's not done in isolation and it's not just about memor memorizing some facts. So you wanna be able to memorize a fact or a definition so that you can apply it to a question or whatever skill that it is that we're asking you to demonstrate in this class, all right? If you have any questions, circle back to me and let me know. Have a good one, thank you.